everyone. This week started with the sad news that a fire had almost led to the destruction of Notre Dame Cathedral. And certainly Quasimodo will have to spend the next couple of years living on the Phantom of the Opera's sofa. The atrocity drove to millions of people around the world pledging lots of money to rebuild it and President Macron says it may be rebuilt in just a couple of years time, presumably because there's an election in 2022 and he'd like to open the cathedral as the last act of office before he's kicked out for being about as unpopular as Henry V was back at Agincourt. Mind you, the Sagrada Familia Cathedral in Barcelona has been under construction since 1882 and it's still not finished. Although the wine is somehow even cheaper in Spain than it is in France, if such a thing is even legal. So that's maybe got something to do with the pace of things out there. This being the internet, of course, the conspiracy theorists showed up faster than the fire brigade to deliver a torrent of, not water, but crazy ideas about how the government decided to start the fire in order to distract from President Macron's unpopularity. Although officials have subsequently said that it was actually due to a short circuit. Hang on a minute, wasn't the robot in the movie Short Circuit originally part of a secret military programme? Hmm, maybe those conspiracy theories have something to them after all. The other news this week, though, was the climate change protests in London, in which many hundreds of people assembled in order to make demands, such as the demand that the BBC wildly overstate the attendance of the protest. For the most part, the march was a jolly good time if you didn't have a job to attend to that day, which most of the rich Islington mummies frankly didn't. The actual demands, of course, are pretty ludicrous and frankly only achievable if we decided to ban modern agriculture, food imports, travelling abroad, making products that contain metal, so on. Um, especially aluminium, by the way, which uses more energy to make a single soda can than a hairdryer would if you left it running for half an hour. The other issue, of course, is that China and India have about as much chance of signing up to any climate change deal as MPs have to signing up to Theresa May's tardy piece of parliamentary paper work. I genuinely think that if the two Asian superpowers ever went to war with each other, there would be an environmentalist on Radio 4 brought in to give a spiel on how the death of half a billion people was ultimately a positive step forward for the environment. Did I say environmentalist? Sorry, I meant to say mentalist. Anyway, see you next week if you like these. Click subscribe.